MEPA. And then we're starting to get um, plans finalized with our engineers to start the local filing process, which is why we're here today, just to give you a heads up on what's coming. And then just some of the other permits that were. So just in Gardner, um, the main line spans 5.22 miles, primarily surrounded by forested habitat from the Winton Town Line to Green Street. It intersects conservation lands such as Bailey Brook, um, North County, and the Gardner Water Supply land. Um, from Green Street to Westminster, it intersects Mount Wachusett Community College, residential areas between Pearl Street, Smith Street, and Trapple Street, which then it crossovers 140 and Westminster. So just to give you a kind of a layout of what the landscape is. There's 71 existing structures along the main line portion itself. You mean towers as structures? Ta yes. Okay. Yep. People see structures, could be houses, so I just want to be clear. Yes, towers, um, lattice towers within the main line. And they're going to be just, I'm guessing you know the same questions I do. They're going to be going the same route. Correct. 100% no changes. No changes. I think I remember hearing this yep. with somebody before. Yep, everything's within the, the same The same path. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, crystal tape, a uh, crystal tap. Same thing, um, 1.25 miles, 1.2 miles. Um, it'll all be located in a place within that same corridor. Um, in that area on the tap, it uh, passes through the Gardner um, Municipal Golf Course. Um, Curly Brook Reservoir is located to the west of the tap line and Crystal Lake to the east. And there's 50 structures. The reason why there's 50 is because there's actually the two circuits, they're separated um, within that corridor. So there's two structures that, that support them there. We have various resources. Um, we've identified 40 um, BBWs off and on right away in the riverfront area, BLSF, land under um, water and waterways. We're working with buffer zone. Major waterways that intersects is Bailey Brook and Curly Brook. And then we do have a cold water fisheries resource, which is Bailey Brook in the project area. So this is just an overview of um, what's proposed within the main line. You can see on the left-hand side, there's a picture of the existing lattice tower structures that are within the, the right-of-way. Those will be replaced. You can see just kind of offset to the center um, of the existing um, structure with steel monopole structures, which will support both circuits again. Um, and you can see a picture on the right showing you an example of the type of structure where it's going to be um, replaced. Teresa, so yeah. I got a question. Yeah. Is it going to be the same 50 structures? There actually there will be a reduction in the number of structures because they are able to go a little bit longer spans in yeah. some places. Oh, yeah. wow. They are um, on average. 95 feet, it, it's dependent upon the, the terrain. Okay. So that's your 95 feet up, does that mean this is going to be less of an issue with tree canopy encroaching, or do you still own those encroachments into the center? They still have to um, remove trees uh, to provide the necessary clearance. Which you do already. Yeah, you yes, the forest, but, yeah. yep, but for this, they are going to need to um, remove trees along the main line. So it's a utility, so it's a little treated a little differently than a standard wetlands crossing. Um, this will be subject to review um, yeah. because it's associated with uh, rent placement. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the main line, and then on the on the tap line, the existing structures are these wood pole structures that you see on the left. Um, Again, those they're going to replace the structures within the same corridor, and they were able to uh, design it using um, the depth arms that go into the center, which enables them to keep it within that corridor and keep that tight spacing. Um, and so you can see over on um, the left hand side, there's a depiction of what the replacement structures will look like. What's the KVA across those lines? How much power is coming down the line? 69 kV. Um, it's being designed to 115. It will operate at 69 kV, but they are constructing it so that when that time comes, they'll be able to operate it and not have to go back to this. That's the 69. Is it? That's a bit now? No, no, I think it's less. I think it's less now. It, it's, currently, it's currently 69. Okay. 
Um, but they're designing it because they are anticipating within its lifespan that it will need to offer it in 2015. Yeah. Interesting. So this is just a depiction of just to give you um, an overview of the tree removals that will be occurring um, within the mainline corridor. So right now, if you think of on average across the line, it's about 80 feet of um, clearance within the corridor. And they're going to be expanding that to have 100 feet. So you can about 10 feet on, other, on either side. Um, the mapping that you've received thus far for the NEPA filing, they've used LIDAR to identify by canopy where those tree removals are going to occur that's in conflict right. with the clearance requirements for the line. So. Yeah, and just yeah. off right away, we just have three different kind of depictions. Um, so off right away, where you have a, a new 12 foot wide um, access road going in, they need about 30 foot of, of clearance for that. This is just showing you if you have an area where it's new or it really hasn't been maintained at all, you know, they would be taking the trees that are within that 30 feet. Um, whereas another area where we have a different polygon depicting selected tree removal that you're going to see on your plans because those are areas where it's not very densely vegetated and so they'll work with the landowner or whoever to you know selectively remove trees along the access route and then the the third one is just showing that in some areas it's clear it's just a matter of pruning in order to make sure that the equipment can get through without um, damage so you'll see these kind of different depictions on your plant set and then um, just an overview of avoidance and minimization measures Big one is they're using the existing right of way. Um, the majority of the work will be within right of way. There are some off right of way um, access routes that will be required within Gardner utilizing existing um, historic access that has been used um, with some improvements. Um, and then where practical, replacement structures have been located close to the existing structures and other places we've worked with the engineer to actually relocate them away from, um, from wetland areas where practical. Um, and, then, and then there are no permanent stream crossings and no permanent wetland crossings um, proposed for the project. All right, so we'll be using you know, typical sediment erosion controls. Um, temporary construction matting will be used for access within um, resource areas. And then we'll be restoring those wetland areas that are temporarily impacted. Um, in terms of impacts within riverfront area, um, where they are proposing um, to, to do improvements, there will be a temporary loss of vegetation due to grading or adding stone. Following construction, these areas will be loaned and seeded to promote that low uh, growing herbaceous vegetation. We do have one structure along the Crystal Lake Tap, which we will see. It's located right next to um, an intermittent stream. Um, they weren't able to avoid that stream, so we will have one structure that is located um, within land under wetlands and waterways. When you say they, they can't do it, they can't put two double towers on the back side of it and span it that way? And sometimes when they say they can't, it's, it's, it needs to be a little, just, I'd like them to research that a little stronger. Sure, we can certainly um, make sure that we have... Um, I've just seen them with a double, double yeah. tower and then they can get a different span. Different span. Yeah, yeah. So, um, certainly I can provide some specifics on, on the engineer's evaluation of that area for sure. Please, thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in total, the, the permanent impact of the BBW is 517 square feet. Um, that is from um, the Concrete Caisson Foundation's um, direct and bed structures as well. Um, and we are um, proposing wetland replication to be provided. Um, we will have a, a draft um, wetland replication area for you to review as part of the application package. And then um, largely the impacts are the temporary impacts from the construction matting. Um, and we are, as typical standard, um, we'll be doing in situ restoration. So the next steps for us, targeting the FEIR filing in July, which you all will be copied on. Um, What's FEIR? The um, Final Environmental Impact Report. So you'll receive that. 
Um, and then, as I said, NOIs were when I get started this summer, and it'll we expect it'll continue into the fall. It. I can absolutely provide you with a copy of the presentation. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I have other visuals, but I, I know you guys are already um, behind. Um, I'm happy I mean, to show now. If you want to just breeze through a couple, yeah. Just, okay. And then if, if you don't mind, if there's any questions from the commission, anybody have any brief questions, and then we'll open up for the audience. But, I mean, we're not, it's not a hearing. I'm just, there's a lot of people here, so I figured a lot of times a lot of faces. But this is so, cool. not yet, this is so preliminary. We're just, they're just doing the due diligence. This is a normal process that happens every so many years. Could we, can I just ask a simple question wait, about this? Wait until wait she's done and then. Okay. I just have to um, figure out how to switch. Sorry. David, get in there. <laughs> Need some help? out of that like yeah. escape and then close that one out. And it'll just automatically yeah. and then you go now open that one. Anybody in the audience, who you have to handle first? Yeah, I just wondered, 
Um, will you be using any chemicals to um, keep down any of the vegetation? Not for construction. Yeah. They come with floors every year when they would make this plan. It's pretty much the same plan for the 15s I've been holding this. Uh, it's posted, mm -hmm. um, but all of the uh, chemicals that they do use have been approved. And I think it was one time they actually updated one because it came out a, a little better for the environment product came out. That was seven, eight years ago. I don't know if you guys remember, but. So. A list of those chemicals? Um, you, you can go right on their website and pull it up. All right, you have your hand up next. Uh, your name is? My name is Hannah Cajun. Okay. Um, I, I was part of doing a survey uh, in 2022 uh, that could be affected by uh, the wetland declaration uh, survey that you guys might be doing. Um, so once you guys get your data, I'm wondering if there's a way that I could sign up to immediately get well, it's public record. You have to you have to write it to town hall and request a copy from the city clerk. Yeah, I don't know another way of ever of doing that, but go there ahead. also is a, currently a public document that you can access to see the local donations. Um, I can give you the project website so you can see our legal filing, or you can go and access the EPA's website and you can see the project plans that were filed. There you go. Okay. I don't know enough That's about all. that side. Sorry. Thank you. My my client is just really wor worried about their uh, their insurance. So. Yeah, but all, Thank those you. are all public. So. Huh. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, please. Um, I think this um, upgrade is phenomenal. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, and everybody that's going to be plugging in the electric cars in the future are going to need the power. But um, question is this. The uh, substation on the old railroad bed was actually put right in uh, the middle of the railroad bed. And Gardner's in the process of upgrading the bike trail between Gardner and Winchiman. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering with the construction, if it, um, on one side is wetland, so it can't go that way, but I'm wondering if it can be built um, into the hillside um, on the western side of the bike trail. Are you referring to the, the switch, the substation? Yes. The, yes. There's no um, work proposed at the substation as part of this project. But could it be? I was saying that all the. Uh, it's two different processes, it's two different projects completely. I think what she's talking about, I know what you're talking about. Right. But I think it's actually not the same, Paul. It's this one is an upgrade, and they're not gonna. They're keeping the same lines. You're not gonna redesign around that that area you're talking about. All right. Because that came up when they built that. Yeah. One more question is, um, with 90 foot towers being brought in, do they come in in pieces? Um, is there any proposal to um, bring sections of the tower in by helicopter? Uh, currently, helicopter is not um, proposed. Um, but pieces, they are very long, so they is anticipated to be in sections, correct? Yep, that's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank if you very much. If you can send us that information. Absolutely, yeah, I'll look good to making that public for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you at the end of the month. Don't come on the 22nd. Fingers crossed. Yeah, no problem. We'll make it work. Uh, next on the under old business is uh, 170 Mill Street, which is another continuation. This is on... One six zero zero six five eight. Um, I did reach out to um, Mass Dam Safety, and uh, after a couple days, I think they responded back and we received. Did yeah. you see this? Yeah. So yeah. did we get it? I, I, that's, that's, I don't see the signature. Yeah, I don't know. It's first class mail. It's uh, sent to one twenty nine South Main Street, and the subject is a notice of uh, failure to comply with certificate of non compliance in dam safety order. Yeah. This is just for people in the audience. This is in regards to Ramsdale Pond Dam. And uh, it's national ID number MA01720. This is a condition that we've been working on for a while, and it's a poor uh, condition dam, and it's, uh, the hazard potential is significant. Um, the Conservation Commission has sent new, numerous notifications and correspondence out to the property owner, um, and I've gotten no response. 
there's been some information given by Mass Dam Safety to the owner um, with proposed dates of completion. Those have since passed, and they sent one more notification out. Um, uh, structurally def deficient in poor condition. And they, I'm looking to see where it has its radio fields. It's, it's leaking. I'm not on it yet, but it's leaking. Yeah. Uh, it was just, well, needs to say they have given him 45 days to respond. So we'll continue to update everybody on that. Yeah. This goes back a while. They actually has all the tracking and stuff right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. When is, when is the 45 days at? Um, I would say on the, the day notification, which is probably, it's, this one says June 26th. Oh, right here it says, you are hereby notified that you have 45 days from receipt of this letter <coughs> to communicate to ODS, which is the dam safety, in writing with your current schedule to implement plans to bring Ramsdale Pond uh, dam into safety compliance. So upon receiving it, it was delivered on, oh, this is old here, this is something else. I couldn't find one of the answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the first one was sent out back in March. So this one, I don't see any I don't see a notice here, Duncan. You're right. I don't no. see where it might have been attached to the email. Yeah, yeah. So I was on vacation, so I didn't go crazy on it. But so we'll keep everybody posted yeah. on that. Um, we're going to keep continuing this. So someone like to make a motion to continue 170 Mill Street to our next meeting, which is July 22nd. I'll, I'll make that motion. Someone like to second uh, second that. Second. No, thank you. All in favor? All, All right. right. The next under old business is um, 50 Manka Drive. Anybody here to represent 50 Manka Drive? Nobody? Anybody on the commission have any update that no, they're aware of? No, no, no. Yeah, nothing. I, no one has brought out, I think that's the, the proposed storage yeah. area. Yeah, the, uh, that's actually the, uh, the salt, right? Is that the same one you had mentioned? Mm. Yeah. I don't have any other update. Um, so let's, let's just continue this as well. So we don't really have it filing yet. It's just more of a notification that they did go to meet with, uh, yeah. with Doug, or the agent, previous agent. So I'd like to make a motion to continue um, the 50 Manka Drive to July 22nd. I'll make that motion. So my second? Second. Thank you, David. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is approved. Uh, nothing under um, new, new professional development. Our next meetings are July 22nd and August 12th. Anybody in the commission have any other business to discuss at this time? No. No. Nope. Nope. Sure. Nothing else on the agenda. meetings and um, I, I can't I can't do it I can't get to midday meetings no okay, yeah. so um, we'll just continue to send them out and I just want to have uh, an understanding from from cover how that process is going to work because what I don't want is somebody signing off on uh, reviewing wetlands documentation unless it's one of us and if one of you guys do sign off on it try to get two of us it just if you can go by chance and something pops up or Trevor calls or sends an email out yeah. Um, try to get two, two of us to go. That's all, that's all I can say. Just so we're all covered. And, um, <coughs> and 
I think that's it. Any, anybody have anything else? No. No. Nothing else on the docket. So would someone like to make a motion to end tonight's hearing? I'll make that motion. Someone like to second that motion? I'll second. All in favor. All, All right. right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Sorry about the technical difficulties.